Hey everybody, it's Hulk and Hayden, and I'm back with the Helsin vs. Hayden campaign. This is War in the Pacific Admirals Edition, Scenario 2. I'm Japan, he's the Allies. It is January 14th, 1942, and we just grabbed Bowen, which is very important to us in Australia. Okay, now we're coming ashore at Cairns. Cairns? Cairns? This might be a contested landing, I'm not sure. I don't know if he's going to have troops there. <sighs> man, my heart always gets... My heart's always pounding when I watch these turns, man. I don't know why. I really shouldn't get that upset about it. Whoa! What do we got here? Oh! Okay. Whew. I thought he was actually going to attack here. This is a, a mine sweeper, a mine layer? Mine sweeper? That was in Bowen, and... It came out of the port because we took the base, and it it met my AKs and said, ah, we don't want nothing to do with that, and left. <sighs> okay, so far so good. Okay, not much happening on the night. Uh, air phase spotted a maybe a submarine in the Philippines all right so this is us landing on this base here just south of Singapore I figured it would be very easy for us to get in here and get out and take it I mean why not might as well just do it Tanjung Tanjung Penang Oof. does appear that he has troops in Cairns. Cairns? Cairns? Which he didn't last turn. But I, I had a suspicion he was going to rail something up. The tuna. The tuna again. Oh, man. Oh, that stupid tuna. Oh, thank God. If that was a Dutch sub, we would have been screwed, guys. <laughs> oh, man. I think the tuna's just about out of ammo, too, because that thing was um, hitting us at Port Moresby. You remember a few days ago? He shot, like, eight torpedoes at one ship, and they all... Or duds or something. So the Mark 14 curse is still alive and well for him. Oh, hit direct hit. Nice. Nice. All right, so we got a direct hit on the tuna. It's probably going to be enough to make it go away. Okay, here we go. Guys, I am expecting... A heavy counterattack on Surabaya this turn. Totally expecting this. Like, if we don't see air stuff happening, I'm going to be really surprised. Yeah, so I've done what I can to protect against it, but... We're operating at the extreme limits of what we can do with our land-based air in, in Java. So it's very possible if he comes with overwhelming numbers, we're not going to be able to hold him off. And we're going to take losses. So we're going to have to wait and see how it goes. <sighs> okay, here we go. Okay. So we're sweeping over Surabaya, and right off the bat, I don't see like he's putting up any cap at all, which is great for me. Okay, and now we're leading off with an attack on Changsha today. I figured I need to put some damage on this airfield. I'm, I'm concerned that he's going to start launching attacks from there again. So there we go. We get into Surabaya. We should get a good airstrike in. All right, so right off the bat, we get really nice. Oh, jeez. 
Oh, dang. We get really awesome hits on the airfield because we have no real intervention. Like, he doesn't seem to have any, any AA there. Uh, the weather's good. We hit one Catalina, and we do some good damage to the base. I like that. That was good. Okay, we're softening up this uh, hex here because we're attacking now. Okay, partial cloud over uh, Palambang. That should be good for us. Oh my goodness. Excellent. Excellent attack on Changsha today. Big air base supply hits. Big runway damage. This is excellent. And let me tell you why this is good. Because the key to winning in China is air superiority and bleeding the Chinese of, tr of supply. If you starve them out, they cannot wage war. So these supply hits are robbing his supply that he's soon going to be really cut off from. I like this. We have plenty more to go. Oh, I knew it! Look at that. LB-30 Liberators. I knew they were going to be there. Okay, guys, I, I mentioned this on my Discord, but I didn't say it in the video. I noticed that he had eight bombers in Changsha, and I said, I'll bet you they're Liberators because he gets these LB-30s, which are like early B-24s, and my guess was that he was going to launch an attack out of Changsha and target Nagasaki with these things, thinking that my ships would be in port. But... I outsmarted him, I planned an attack on this base, and I pulled all my ships out of the major ports near, uh, over here on... I took everything out of that I could out of Nagasaki, and I put cap up. So I think I outsmarted him this time, guys. This is good stuff. It may not stop him getting that raid off, but when those aircraft land, they're going to have nowhere to land. Because the base is going to be trash when they get there. I think I outsmarted him this time, guys. So, I, I am expecting those Liberators to hit me this turn. I But there's only eight of them, and I've got cap at the places i got to have cap at. Alright, so a uh, pretty decent hit on Palambang. Taking out some supply, damaging some aircraft. Losses are very good. So, excellent. Nice, nice. Just kind of spreading it out, guys. Look at that. See how, see how important the weather is? When you have clear skies, you can get really good hits. Like, the supply hits are the absolute most important thing we can be doing right now. I love it. This is really good for me today. Awesome, man. There's not going to be an airbase left at Changsha. If those, if those LB-30s already took off, when they come back, they're going to have a hard time getting in. I think we got him, man. So, again, we may not be able to stop the the Liberators from attacking us. But um, what we did do is make that base unusable for him for future operations for a while. I, this is one of the best air phases I've had in a while. Decent weather. Good hits. Yep, I called it. Ha <laughs> ha, I got capped there. <laughs> I knew they were coming. <laughs> Come on. I knew it. I knew he was going to do this. I got him. I know they're only Nates, but I, I still think they can uh, disrupt these bombers.
so the risk that we have here, guys, is that... Um, uh, what was I going to say? The We do have some ships in the shipyard. They could be at risk here. But hopefully these guys um, cause enough problems so that their aim is thrown off. And we do have some AAA here. I'm hoping they can... They can do something with this. <sighs> These nates. That's all I have, though. So, my thought process is here is every liberator that we damage is a high chance of being an ops loss when he tries to get back into Changsha and the field is completely trashed, so... I just hope they don't destroy anything in the shipyard. Because I pulled everything out of port, but I can't get the stuff out of shipyard. So, dang it. We're having a hard time with these liberators right now. Alright, let's just go ahead and find out how bad it's going to be. Here we go. Clear sky. That's not good for us. Okay, Flack is doing some damage here. This is working out. This is good. He didn't hit crap. <laughs> he didn't hit anything, guys. <laughs> All right. So, I would call this a complete and utter outplaying of Hells in this turn. I saw what I thought were liberators in Changsha. We destroyed that base. We put Cap up just in time at Nagasaki. I had Flak there. He didn't hit anything because we disrupted him so bad. And now his aircraft are going to be a lot of ops losses because they're going to have no field to land at. This was good. Got him. If you guys were on my Discord, you would have heard me talk about all of this. So good. I feel so good about Nagasaki. I, I straight out played him. And so far, very little intervention by the Allied aircraft, but I'm prepared for that in the PM phase, just in case. That AM phase was fantastic. I'm totally perfect. Ah, <laughs> I was ready this time, guys. <laughs> We're ready this time. Not today, buddy. Not today. I put up everything, including the kitchen sink, because I knew these guys were coming. Okay. Let's find out if any get through. Five get through. Uh, uh, it's not going to be good. Okay, but well that's a miss. Come on, miss, 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 miss. Nice. Yes. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, let's shoot some of these things down. Let's shoot some down. Come on. Nice.
Nice. We defeated that. So I don't know if there's anything else coming, but that first wave, uh, we definitely got them. Tell me that's it. Okay, more coming in, but we, we got plenty of cap, guys. We'll, we'll handle this. Uh, where's my cap? Where is my cap? Uh, okay, good. Whew. Yeah, these things are going to be so disrupted. I don't think they're going to be able to have a good attack. Nice. Nice. Nice, dude. He's... Yep. We defeated it. That's awesome. Okay, so that's the second Dornier attack defeated. That's it. <laughs> oh, it's so good. That's so good. Okay, a little submarine action. This is at Pago Pago. Looks like I-169... Just taking a peek. Nice. Now we're short at Malang. That's what I needed, guys. Fantastic. Okay, let's have a good turn here. Okay, this is us attacking. We're trying to break through to this hex here on the Lanchow Road. And we got it. And these guys retreated in an inconsequential direction. One unit is outright destroyed and to retreat. My guess is this, this slash C is what's dead. Perfect. And this is us bombarding him just to kind of see what he's going to do here. And he looks like he left behind a little fragment of a unit just to just to do it. All right. This is us attacking, trying to clear this hex out. And oddly enough, it does not appear that we kill it outright. Kind of figured we would with the... 52 to 1 odds, but once again, this game likes to be crazy, so we'll have to shock attack here next turn. And this is us landing, this is us at Banjawangi. No big deal here because there is no opposition, so now we're got a firm, strong beachhead on Java. Our troops attacking um, the garrison that was at Sabang on our way down to Medan. This is uh, open and shut. And we should have something pursuing. Yep. Trying to stay on their heels. Excellent. 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 Us attacking here. Just trying to clear this road. And these guys are displaced with some losses, although there's hardly anything left in it. So I think that's awesome that we didn't kill it because now it's just dangling out there and just just completely trash, but not dead. So he can't buy it back or bring it back to Chungking. He's stuck there. Okay, Cooktown. 
There it is. She's ours. And this is a shock attack at Beaufort. That went perfect once again. Normanton. Awesome. Awesome. Wow. That was an amazing turn. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Dude, this turn was amazing. I love it that we beat Helson. We outsmarted his little crappy little bomber stuff. I, I saw it coming and we got him. We got him today, man. I'll bet you most of those LB-30s aren't going to make it back. And that's a big loss because the Allies only get 24 of those at the first couple months of the war, and that's it. Then they have to wait for a while for the other B-24s to show up. So if we can kill a bunch of them now, um, that just means, you know, it's kind of a big deal. Okay, we've got a new sub-chaser, a, a raiding regiment in Kagoshima, which is a parachute regiment. Those are great. <sighs> that was a good turn, guys. That was really good. All right. Things are looking really good in Australia right now, guys. Actually, things are looking good all over the place. We'll talk about it. Aircraft losses for today. Finally getting some kills on the board here. Um, enemy lost seven. We lost six. We shot down six of those, five of those stupid Dornier 24s. That's awesome. Uh, we lost two Nates uh, due to LB-30s that tried to hit Nagasaki, but we totally saw through that. And uh, just a smattering of other ops losses, nothing particularly noteworthy. Of those six aircraft lost, we had four KA pilots, which is a shame, but, you know, have to do it. Take a look at our wounded pilots right now. Okay, so we got Igusa. We need to send him back to the reserve. I thought I did this already. And this guy came off the Maya. Let's see here. Dohi Dohibara. All right, and then we'll go look at the reserve. This guy we're going to go ahead and retire. And the rest of these guys should be coming back. Okay, Army lost points for this turn. The Allies lost 43, and the Japanese won. Ship sunk this turn. According to the game, uh, the tuna was sunk, which I refuse to believe a single uh, Type 95 Mod 2 death charge would destroy one of these Mark 14 boats. There's no way that the ship went down. Don't believe it. So I think we'll see this back in action in a month or two. All he's got to do is take it down to uh, Brisbane, and there's a, a dockyard there to fix it up. No strat points this turn. Total score for the turn, we gained an additional 210 points, bringing our win ratio up to 2.131. And real quick, since we're, since we're already here, let's talk about tracker. So I have a nice, long, widespread today, but here's our points breakdown. We're at turn 40 right now, 13,000 points. Uh, you can see here uh, one of the major reasons that we went up so heavily in points this turn was the base expansions. We had a number of bases grow in size, and it depending on the multiplier of the base, you can get a lot of points for that. So that was probably the bulk of our score was derived from that. Also, army loss points were good. Uh, ship sunk points, I, I don't count those because, you know, that sub's not going to be dead for long. So there's our breakdown. And I'm keeping notes on this tab whenever I remember to. So today we took Cook down, Normanton, Bowen, and we landed at Malang, Java. Cool. Let's take a look at combat report now. Sea engagement. So this was, was a, a scary one at first because I thought I thought initially maybe he'd sent a cruiser or something up to disrupt their landing. It turned out it was the 
the Townsville, which was getting out of Dodge because the base flopped on us. So if we look at it here, um, the Bowen, when we took Bowen, there was a ship in there and it came out of port and it immediately skedaddled. So that's what that was. All right. Uh, Milton Bay, we had a little sub activity and we had the direct hit on the tuna there. Pago Pago, nothing happened there. Ground activity was pretty good. Uh, I don't count. That's not a big deal. We captured Normanton today. No losses. Cooktown captured it with no losses. Beaufort captured that with basically no losses. Banjuwangi. We got our firm foothold on Java officially now. And then some good engagements on the ground in China where we defeated and or destroyed some stuff. So we'll take a look at what that means for our our stuff from the ground in China. And of course, we had the victory south of Sabang as we continue driving down towards Madan where the oil's at. Air engagements today. I would say um, our Changsha bombing was very good. We got a lot of good hits in there. A lot of damage to the airfield and a lot of supply hits uh, with a lot of big bombs, I imagine. So this is really good for me. Disabled that base, more or less. And then Nagasaki, where we intercepted these Liberators trying to bomb us, just like I anticipated. But we'll talk about that in just a second. Second for this turn, we got radio transmissions here in Russia. I don't care. Uh, Tacoma, nothing I can glean from that. Now, this is something. Look at this. Over here, near Kangaroo Island, there's heavy radio transmissions here. So I think I understand what this is. What I think it is, is either Helsin uh, is moving ships back from Perth, or m more importantly, what I think is going on is that he's shipping stuff from Cape Town, right? And it's coming in on the penalty box somewhere near here, and he's shooting it down and going into Melbourne this way. A lot of allied players are catching on that Perth is actually pretty dangerous to to ship stuff into because it's easy to blockade this. So you can get cruisers out here. You can get submarines out here. It's not safe to go into Perth all the time if you have a good Japanese player. So what they'll do is they'll come in over here, kind of aim for this direction, and then scoop down into Melbourne. And, you know, this is pretty more or less safe area because it's hard to sustain operations down here because it's so far away from our lines. So yeah, that's what I think is going on here. I think he's got, I think he's shipping stuff into Melbourne that way, as opposed to trying to come into the Tasman Sea, because he knows we're all over the place right now, and uh, trying to go into Perth. And then a lot of activity at Tamworth. We can see he's got aircraft there, uh, probably a reasonable amount of them too. Okay, ops report. Uh, let's take a look at arrivals. We had a second rating regiment coming in. That is a transport squadron carrying troops uh, for carrying the second rating uh, regiment. And then we got a new sub chaser at Ominato. Combat this turn. We can see that we had a, a report of the tanker Mindanao reported to have been sunk near Bataan on December 8th. Intel brief, a lot of stuff to talk about here. Most of it's good, some of it's not so good. Fusan, size 4 airfield. ADAC, size 3 airfield. Cristobal, which I believe is over here. Right there, size 5 airfield, or size 5 port. Okay, whatever. It's off map, I can't do anything about it. Uh, this is important. Uh, Manila, size 6 airfield, which is great for me, because I... I can operate a ton of aircraft out of here if I want to with no restrictions. Uh, check it out. Rabal size 5 port. J Jal, Jal, Ga okay, wait, look at this first. Tamworth and Toowoomba airfields are expanding in Australia, and that could be a problem. So, Toowoomba and Tamworth, these are the bases in Australia that he is building up. Probably to, to repel our further assaults further south towards uh, Brisbane, right? He wants to have alternate airfields to operate all of his aircraft from. 
And then let's see, Japanese tab. You can see we captured five bases today. Bowen in Australia, Banjuwangi, Cooktown, Beaufort in in the uh, in Borneo, and Normanton. All right, let's talk about the round. We'll start in Northern Pacific. No activity at all. ADAC is just coming up nice. That's basically all we got going on there. Okay, uh, Hokkaido, Sakhalin area, nothing happening. We are really getting some good resource production out of this now, though. I've got multiple convoys moving again, and we're drawing a lot of resources into Hokkaido, and from there into Ominato and Hirosaki. So we got maximum uh, resource extraction going on up here now. Additionally, we have maximum resource extraction at Fusan because of the uh, size of the port there now. In China, uh, a couple good developments. Um, we had a couple victories. Let's get out my pen here. Oops, there we go. We had a victory here, which cleared another hex for us. And if as long as I keep a, a troops here that he can't overwhelm, uh, that's going to help keep the supply line open. So the next thing I need to do is get into this hex right here and clear that one out. And then we will have open supply lines all the way up to our push towards Lanchow. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, we had a victory here too. This unit's pretty well beat up. However, I think we need to shock attack it next turn because it definitely did not die. And I'd like it to die. So we'll hit, we'll bomb it and we'll hit it again next turn. It's on clear terrain, so we should have finished it off. But I think the issue is that, oh, nope, the hex side control here. Um, there's, there's absolutely nowhere for that unit to retreat. There's nowhere to go. So they're going to hold on a bit longer than a, a unit that had a retreat path. If these guys had a, somewhere to retreat, they probably would have done so. But we own all the hex sides around them. So it's kind of stuck there. So we'll go ahead and just let it stay there. Uh, we also got into this hex this turn, so we're going to have these guys deliberate attack and try to finish these guys off. And my guess is that when these guys are killed, they'll probably retreat this way, right? Because they're going to be seeking supply, which is up this way. So they'll probably displace back into this hex, and then I can leave a very small unit here just to keep these roads open. And I can take these bigger units and use them elsewhere. Uh, one issue that I am seeing here right now is that even though we just took this hex and we are moving into here to uh, block the oil, I see a movement marker right here. So he's definitely moving into at least this hex. And my guess is he's going to probably go to here to cut us off. I did leave some troops behind here to guard this, but still, uh, I don't. he's got, look at this. Look at this death stack. This is a major death stack. 251,000 troops sighted here. He could take half of those and still block the hex that we're in. And that would be a huge problem for us. So uh, I, I'm going to watch this carefully because I don't know what he's going to do here. But, you know, this could also be an opportunity. If he gets too weak here, we may be able to attack with our tanks and break through. And if we break through here, it's just as good as us owning this hex, right? So I don't care if it's this one. Or this one. Uh, either one of these stops the oil getting into Chungking or the fuel. And that shuts down the heavy industry from that direction. Again, we still have uh, fuel able to flow this way. Right? From Magway. But that's not going to be forever. Alright, let's keep talking about China because there's a few more things to see here. Um, so... It looks like Helsin's jailbreak is going to hit a wall here pretty quick. So he did get out of this hex, right? And he's moving this way. But you see this and this? These units are one to two turns away from moving into this hex here. And once we do that, we will block him and he can't go any further. So his jailbreak didn't get too far. Um, let's take a look at that. Let's see what kind of terrain that is. All right, that's really good terrain for us. So I don't have as much force as he does, but he will never break through at this WR terrain. So I think we have a chance here to maybe defeat this unit. 
once we get enough forces here and kind of put an end to it. And I, to be honest with you, at this point, I think I'd rather just kill these guys than keep dealing with this stuff because I'm having to use a lot of troops to contain this and I'd rather have them up at the front. I'd rather have them kind of working on this line as opposed to dealing with this crap back here. So we'll see if we can get enough troops into the hex to uh, deal a fatal blow. But I think we might be able to once we get into here. But he doesn't know. He definitely doesn't know these units are on the way. So when he pulls into this hex, he's going to be in for a big surprise. This jailbreak didn't go very far. Okay. Um, so let's talk about the big uh, thing that happened here at Changsha. So I, on my Discord yes, the other day when I was looking at the turn, I noticed that this base had eight bombers and eight auxiliary aircraft at Changsha. And I just had this premonition. It was like this clairvoyance that those were LB-30s, which are Liberators, which, by the way, have a maximum extended range of 24. Okay. So look at Changsha and look at Nagasaki. 23. So I did the math and I, and I theorized that Helsin flew in LB-30s here thinking that I wouldn't notice. And he was going to hit Nagasaki. Um, so here's what I did. I ordered a massive bombing raid from Hankow and Canton on Changsha. And on top of that, I pulled out all the ships that I possibly could from Nagasaki, right? And the only thing that's left in there are my ships that are currently in the shipyard, okay? So it was a little risky because I definitely had ships at, that were at, at danger. But I figured, you know, it's only eight aircraft, extended range. Additionally, I, I got these guys this Nate unit, I decided to bring them in here and they did excellent work for me. We lost two pilots and two aircraft, but they were trainee pilots anyway. They weren't particularly good and they disrupted the uh, LB 30s enough that they, they missed entirely. So this whole operation for Helsin was a major failure. Uh, you can bet that most of those aircraft are badly damaged. So what he's probably going to do now is take these aircraft and rail them to here. That's my guess. So what we're going to do next turn is we're going to hit this base, right? Because he's not going to want to leave them in Changsha because he knows we'll bomb it again. So he's going to take those damaged aircraft and rail them to uh, this base. Actually, we need actually if I take if I think about it, we need to wait two turns and not do that. So we're going to wait two turns and then wait for those aircraft to rail. They'll take a turn to rail. They'll show up here, right? And then we bomb that base and try to destroy them for good. Next turn, we'll probably hit Changsha one more time because in addition to uh, damaging the airfield, we hit a lot of supply here. And like I mentioned in my video earlier, the number one way to defeat Chinese troops right now is to starve their supply. And we're well on our way, right? We stopped the Burma Road. We're about ready to cut the fuel from Lanchow. We're going to have Magway soon. And then the supply generation in China will drastically reduce to the point where he can no longer keep his troops in the field supplied. And that's when we can really start making gains. But yeah, every time I take out a, a piece of supply from a base, that base gets weakened. And these troops get weakened. So uh, bombing these bases is proving to be more effective than bombing the troops in the field. With the exception of when we're actually trying to attack. When we're trying to take out a unit, then it kind of makes sense to um, to bomb them. Right? Because you want to disrupt them. Anyway, that's enough about China. I think you guys get the gist. Burma, status quo right now. Uh, we're not really um, doing anything here. Okay? Alright. Let's take a look over here. Uh, we just landed in uh, Tanjung Penang. And next turn we're going to deliberate attack. And we should be able to defeat this unit and take over this base. Last turn, we took um, Beaufort. So we own that now. At this point, I need to kind of wait because it's going to require amphibious assaults to take Brunei and Miri. So we'll just wait here. But we've captured all those bases there. Uh, let's take a look at Philippines. So kind of some bad news here, but I didn't. I kind of expected it. The... Allied troops that just took Lingayen 
are now moving towards San Fernando and these other bases. So he's definitely looking to take these bases here. And what I think he's going to do at some point is he's going to turn towards Tugugarau because he knows this is the airfield that we've been operating out of. Um, and that's, that's okay with me if he wants to do that because I'm already in the process of evacuating it and getting the troops into Apari. And from there, I'm going to sail these troops around this way dump them into uh, Batangas and move them into Manila. We can't get through the uh, the forts here at Bataan, so we're not even going to try it. But that's what I'm going to do. I've already planned for this, so... We're already on our way to get this done. And I've also moved in the Shipping Engineer Regiment because they have naval support, and these will help my units at Apari load up on the ships faster. So, as you can see, we're moving everything out. I've left one unit to straggle behind a bit, and we're going to cancel the move and restart it. So it's moving, but slowly, because this unit's going to stay behind and help get any disabled aircraft put back together before the enemy gets here. So we have about a week or two. Eh, well, let's see. Two, five. I'd say we have about ten days at most before... We need to think about being completely out of Tugugarau, and by that time, we'll have everything moved into Manila. And as you guys are aware with my total strategy for uh, the Philippines here, uh, it relies on me starving these troops out nice and slow. And I don't even have to do much more than bomb them every day. They're going to starve themselves just eating the supply because they're not getting any more supply in. So they're just eating what they got, and they will starve themselves. So if he wants to go and rampage all through here and take everything, that's fine. He can own the whole place again. All he's going to do is be spread out, starving. And the, the, the most important base on Luzon is Manila because that's where the supply generation's at. We make our own supply there every day, 100, almost 100 supply points. We have the airfield. We have forts. This is the most important base, and we own it. So he can go drive around. Uh, Luzon all day until his heart's content, but it doesn't stop the fact that he is going to starve to death. Okay, looking down here on Mindanao, I'm in the process of moving the 21st Division back towards Cagayan will be the next turn. I've got, tro I've got troop ships heading in there right now to pick it up, and from there we'll find out another use for the 21st Division. It's been replaced by a SNLF unit. I also have additional SNLF companies coming to Garrison Cotabato, Davao, and Cagayan so I can take those larger SNLF units and get them on the road to more important places. We do see that the Zamboanga force has made it into Oro Quieta, and that's really okay because that is times three terrain. I don't have a huge blocking force here, but it should be enough to take out these very weakened Filipino army units who are probably out of supply anyway. So these guys are just going to sit here and, and die. I, I don't even care. They are a non-issue to me at this point. Let's see here. Yeah, so that's the plan on Mindanao. Okay, let's talk about the Java operation. So I, if you guys remember last turn, I was very concerned about Malang because this is a mountain town. See that? And I was not too excited about the possibility of Helsin's units from Bandung heading down here and possibly getting in here to block us. So what we did was we moved the 144th Regiment and did a naval landing here at Malang. And honestly, I think what we're seeing here is a unit from Surabaya because a few turns ago he had three units there. Now he has two. I think this is the third one, and I don't believe it's overly weak. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bomb this hex next turn. And the 144th is going to deliver attack. And if he takes this base, we have a great foothold to continue uh, ingressing into the into Java or attack Surabaya directly. Which we have. I really want to win here, and it's going to take a while for my troops from the beachhead at um, Banjuwangi to get up here because we have to take this base first. It's going to be a two hex drive for my armor. Until we, so it's going to be about five to six days before I can get reinforcements to this hex. So the 144th has to hold here and take it. I think they can, and here's why. This is only one unit in this hex right now. 
even if he took units from Bandung at this point and railed them into here, they're going to be in stra strat strategic move mode. So they're going to arrive in Malang in strat move mode, which is one of the worst modes you can have them in to be in ground combat. So I think Helsin knows that he can't get there in time. I don't think he was expecting us to get into Malang this quickly. So it's it's kind of too late. He if, Even if he moves troops here, they're going to be in strat mode and they won't be able to help him. So we should take this base next turn, I think. In which case we'll be okay. And then we own all that and now we can go for Surabaya. And then we just slowly work our way up the peninsula. And guys, I want to point out to you um, something... We supported this thing with only land-based air from Denpasar and Makassar. We have no carriers here, guys. So part of the problem with Helson's strategy here is that he has elected to do this strat where he's being very passive, and he's just given us too much ground and not pushed back hard enough. So we have this base set up here. Actually, let's see if we can actually... Well, let's... let's I'm talking about it. We have engineers here. Let's start expanding it because why not? He gave us his base to support this landing, right? Once we get into uh, Lumanjang, this is a size 4 airfield. So I can relocate everything from Denpasar into here. And now I have another forward air base on Java to support my operations. And with a size 4 base, we can start bombing Bandung, Batavia. We can control the whole area here because that's the size base that I need. To basically operate my aircraft at full capacity. So I think Helsin kind of screwed up here. Uh, he was on my Discord and he mentioned something about his Dutch pilots being cowards and refusing to attack. I don't know what that means. Uh, allegedly he had um, more aircraft to commit to this than what we saw. The Dorniers came in by themselves unescorted. He's alleging that he had more Dutch fighters to fight than that. I, I don't know if that's true or not. But they didn't show up this turn, and it's kind of too late. We got the 144th in here, and if we take this base next turn, we are really set up for success, and Surabaya is a goner. And the reason Surabaya is a goner is this. It's clear terrain, so it's almost indefendable, undefendable. This would have been a great base to defend. This one, not so much. So things are looking really good in the Dutch East Indies right now, guys. I really... Uh, can't complain too much about anything. Okay, so now let's talk about Australia. So this is also looking really good. We just took Normanton last turn, or this turn. We took Cooktown. We landed in Cairns, Cairns, Carnes. We took Bowen. So here's my plan now. I'm going to take these units to Normanton and move them down this road here to get the Charters Towers and take that base. Okay. I'm going to take these guys from Bowen and move them this way to get to this or actually let me let me redraw all that. We're going to go from Bowen down this way and take this base because it's a junction base, right? All these roads kind of intersect here. I want to take that base out um and block him from being able to do any kind of strat movement on this on these roads here. From Normanton, we can head down this way and take um, Charleville. Now that's going to take a long time. We're talking a couple weeks, and he may already have troops here by then. I'm just kind of thinking ahead. What we're not going to do is take Cloncury, and here's why: because it's got 400 uh, resource points here, and that's 800 strat points. So I'd rather leave that in his enemy hands. So we can just bomb it and take the points. And then he won't get those back. So that's what I'm trying to do here. Okay. Um, also, guys, at Cairns, we see that he's got a very small unit. Uh, I think it's a, a construction unit, like an airfield construction unit, I, because of the, the makeup of it. I think. So we're going to attack here. I don't know if it's going to be successful. If it's not, that's no problem. Um, he's still kind of stuck here. Because in addition to everything else we got going on, next turn we land at Townsville and at Rockhampton. Um, I want these bases too. So we're going to take those. And that's going to basically 
be where we block him from being able to rail up. And by taking this base here and this base here, we deny him the ability to rail up to reinforce this area. We've trapped him here north of Bowen. Whatever is up in here is stuck. I'm not worried about Tenant Creek or Daily Waters. This is a multi-week uh, walk for his guys, assuming they're even here. So this is not a problem at all. What was a problem? Uh, the problem was him railing reinforcements up from, from Brisbane. And we've just cut that off. And we're going to cut it off even more at Rockhampton just to buy us a little more uh, breathing room for a bit while we continue our operations up here, which is the most important area right now. So I would say our Northern Australia invasion is going exactly to plan at the moment. And we have put ourselves in a place where I don't think he can do anything to stop us right now. He failed to build up these bases. Cairns never got built. Townsville never got built. So it's, it. I think I know why. He was planning worst case scenario in case we took it. And that's okay. But the problem is now we're going to own this for a while. And every day that we own it is a day that he's not building this base up and building that base up. Because these bases are very important for the eventual counterattack into the Solomons, right? And we're going to own all these bases. And with the exception of Cooktown, which I do need to develop a little bit, he he's not going to, you know, he's not going to have much to operate out of. I think it's uh, a win-win for us at the moment. So yeah, that's the turn. Uh, it went very, very well, guys. Everything went according to plan. My fighters pre performed. Helsing did not attack or st was completely unable to stop this invasion here. Um, we're making progress on Borneo. Mindanao's looking good. China's looking good. Everything's looking good, guys. I'm really happy with how things are going. Now, this is a pretty impressive score differential i think for january 15th i don't know a whole lot of other campaigns played by the japanese that have done this well as far as points go now i do understand that i've had it exceptionally easy by not having house and fight us at all he's run and not attempted to intervene on almost at all but that's his strategy and that's the strategy that you may face when you play an allied opponent some of them play like this and there's a plus and a minus to it right the plus for him is that he's preserving his forces and he's going to have a ton of stuff to throw it about against us later on at some point. Okay. He's definitely going to have plenty because he hasn't lost anything. But the downside is he has failed to do anything to stop us. And our expansion, if you look at this, is incredible. All of New Guinea, Numea, now Northern Australia, uh, basically everything of value in the DEI, half of the Philippines, all of Malaya, and the most important parts of Burma, and we're way up the Anking Road because he just hasn't tried to intervene. And I like where we're sitting right now, guys. I think it's excellent. So uh, we, it remains to be seen that this is a worthwhile strategy for Helsin. Many people are saying that it's not. I don't know if it is or not. We'll find out. So I hope you keep watching this campaign and I hope you keep tuning into these videos because we're going to find out when Helsin actually does try to fight us how it's going to go for him. I'll catch you guys on the next one.